Hi, my name is Bruce Blumberg, and I'm a professor of developmental and cell biology, pharmaceutical sciences, and biomedical engineering at the University of California, Irvine. In Module 1, we explored some reasons for the obesity epidemic and discussed how genetics, prenatal nutrition, and environment play a role in causing obesity. In this module, we're going to discuss the major molecules and processes in lipid homeostasis and how exactly these can be affected by the kinds of endocrine disrupting chemicals you've already learned about in this course. In order to understand what's going on, we have to first understand how hormones affect the shape of our bodies. In this case, we are not going to focus on the types of hormones that build muscle. These are called anabolic steroids. We will focus on the ones that build fat. Weight, obesity, and fat development in humans are controlled by multiple hormones. In fact, almost every part of your metabolism is under the control of hormones. You may be familiar with insulin and glucagon, which help regulate the amount of glucose in your blood. Other hormones tell us when we're hungry and when we're full. These are chemicals like ghrelin, leptin, and adiponectin. Ghrelin is produced by your stomach and stimulates hunger. Leptin and adiponectin are produced in fat. High levels of leptin are linked with obesity. In contrast, adiponectin works the opposite way. Low levels of adiponectin are linked with obesity. Thyroid hormones set your basal metabolic rate, which is another way of saying it establishes how many calories you burn at rest. There are, of course, many more hormones that control virtually every process in your body. But the hormones that we're going to look at closely in this module are ones that control adipogenesis, lipid homeostasis, and lipid metabolism. Adipogenesis is the creation of new fat, or adipose tissue. It is a complex process that is controlled by many different factors. We're going to focus on two specific ones called RXR, retinoid X receptor, and PPAR gamma, peroxisome proliferator activated receptor gamma. This animation illustrates that receptors are proteins that receive and bind to a specific molecule called a ligand. RXR and PPR gamma are called nuclear receptors because they act in the nucleus. Nuclear receptors are different from many other types of cellular receptors, for example those at the cell surface in this animation, in that nuclear receptors bind directly to a piece of DNA in the nucleus. Technically they are termed ligand modulated transcription factors. This means when the receptor binds to its ligand, usually a hormone such as estradiol or cortisol, the receptor ligand complex binds to DNA and turns genes on or off directly. What's key here is that the ligands that bind to these nuclear receptors are nearly all small, fat-soluble molecules that roam the body pretty freely. They get into cells without needing to be specifically transported for the most part. Most nuclear receptors respond to low levels of hormone. That is, it doesn't take much to get them to turn their target genes on or off. This means that regulating the concentrations of the hormones is very important. Although most nuclear receptors bind strongly to one or a few ligands, endocrine disrupting chemicals, EDCs, that are similar to the genuine ligand can also bind to the receptor, for example the estrogen receptors, and cause target genes to be turned on or off as you can see in this animation. EDCs that activate or inactivate RxR and PPR gamma at the wrong time during development can disturb adipogenesis. This tells us right off the bat that it might be a little easier than we would like to disturb lipid homeostasis leading to increased weight. So here we have two receptors, RxR and PPR gamma, that when bound to a ligand turn genes on or off directly. And the ligands, because of their composition, are able to get in and out of the cells freely, and they respond to low levels of hormones. There are several chemicals in the environment that will also bind to RxR and PPR gamma. What we have here is a recipe for trouble. Why? It's because of what happens when those genes get turned on. If you activate RxR PPR gamma, you turn certain susceptible cells into fat cells. In other words, the genes that get turned on make proteins that tell cells that weren't sure what they were going to be when they grew up that you are now a fat cell. PPR gamma is the master fat cell regulator, and its activation controls the body's adipocyte number, size, and function, and it increases the storage of fat into existing fat cells. So we must end with these questions. What are these chemicals that can potentially wreak havoc in our bodies? What evidence is there that they exist? 
Are we exposed to enough of them to harm us? And if so, what can we do about them? We'll cover that in the last module when we discuss the obesogen hypothesis.